Connors Brady here, and I'm getting ready to do my math midterm assessment. So here's my math envelope. Here we go. Least common multiple on the pegboard. And once again, I will be inviting Dog to join me for my lesson. Dog, would you like to come have a lesson with me on least common multiple with the pegboard? Oh, awesome. Would you help me gather our material? And then you get the peg, and the board. Dog, thank you for joining me today. I am so excited to give you this lesson. I can tell by some of your work with the charts that you're ready for this lesson. numbers for this lesson. We're going to look at the number 32 and we're going to look at the number 24. So we have these two numbers and what we want to find out is the lowest number they have in common as a multiple. So it sounds complicated because there's some really big words in math, but it's actually not at all. I'm excited to show you. So we're going to use our pegs and we're just going to build these numbers. So we have 32. built 32 because we have 10, 20, 30, 31, 32. And we're also going to build 24. And we'll know that this is 24 because we have 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Well, we can see clearly right here that 32 and 24, those are not the same. And what we're looking for is to get to a place where they are the same. So we already know straight out of the gate, they're not the same. So we're gonna separate these with a little piece of paper and we're gonna build them again. So we have 32 here. So now on this side with 24, we have 24 twice, so we have 48. And over here on our side with the 32, we have 32 twice, so we have 64. We can count our pegs just to be sure of that. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. But 64 and 48 are still not the same. Hmm. Maybe if we add 24 to this side again, since it's the lesser side, it might add up to make them both the same. Let's find out. Sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four, sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy. Oh, well, we got a group of ten there. So we can trade those out for a 10. But here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72. 
and here we have 68. They're still not the same. Let's put another group of 32 over here and see if we get somewhere. Oh, well here we now have 96 and over here we had 72. So we still haven't gotten to a place where they're equal. I guess we'll just add another group over here of 24 and see what that brings us to. So here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 96. Let's see what we have here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Oh, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. So we got to a place where they're equal. If you have 32 three times or 24 four times, you get 96 as their common multiple. Isn't that cool how that worked out? So down here, we know 96 is the least common multiple between the numbers 32 and 24. And we were able to solve that using the pegboard. I know that was really cool, wasn't it? Yes. We were looking at multiplication like repeat addition. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me about this? Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson. Would you help me restore this material? Oh, thanks. Put all of our pegs back. numbers back, put our little strips back, and we'll put our material back. Dog, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. So that was least common or lowest common multiple with the pegboard. And question time. Please tell us what lessons would come before this lesson and what lessons would come after, would come next. Um, the lessons that I would do before this would be lessons on prime and composite numbers. So we'd be looking at numbers, number patterns, number families, that type of thing. And then the lessons that would come after this. Oh, factors. Thank you, long chains. <laughs> the lessons that would come after this would be factors. That would be a nice progression. All right. When giving the lesson, the students seem to have difficulty grasping the concepts. What would you do? I would reset my presentation. I would start presenting it in a different way. It, whether that means just speaking in a different way, using a different vocabulary, um, different math terms, or using a, a different material altogether. Um, you could present this using the golden beads. You could present this using the stamp game. If there's another material that that student gravitates towards and finds success more with, then that's what I would recommend as, as the material to use next or as a material for students who are having difficulty grasping the concepts. <laughs> if the child does not know the facts needed for this lesson, how can you help? Um, this happens often where students realize they don't have all the knowledge they need to make the lesson or the use of the material easy for them or as easy as it could be. So usually we discuss just the importance of prior knowledge and how that could benefit, that information would benefit the students with either this lesson or the use of this material. So they can reflect and recognize themselves that they don't have the lesson and then usually they come up with their own strategies from that point as to what they can do to support themselves. 
if the student wasn't doing that, I would just make suggestions of materials that we should spend more time on, suggestions that are expected um, that the students could work with before returning to this material. I don't like to take the lesson away from them and say, okay, you clearly weren't ready for this, but I do like to say to them, why don't we just spend maybe another few days practicing with the multiplication bead board so we feel really good about our facts. And then when you decide that you feel confident in that knowledge, you can decide to move on to using this material or so on and so forth. What other math materials would teach the same concepts but at a higher or lower degree of abstraction? So before the pegboard, we would have looked at multiples with the charts and more, much more concrete applications. Um, I have my own little number families and groups for multiples and multiplication charts. So they would have been looking a lot at those types of grouping before moving on to this. And then taking, I know I can hear them out there. They better be behaving. <laughs> um, but then moving on to a higher degree of abstraction, it would be uh, the use of other materials. So like I mentioned, the golden beads and the stamp game takes multiples and exploration to the next level too, which would be a great place to move on to from this. What are the points of interest in the lesson? What is the control of error? And what is the difficulty of this lesson? So the points of interest would be multiplication work, um, a lot of, um, students that I have really do love isolating numbers and organizing them into families that really speaks to them so for the kids that really love the organization my type A students this appeals to their interest just in and of itself the way the use of the material is and the way that they would lay out the pegs and the way they would organize the material as they're working through it um, also the use of the pegboard is a big point of interest for many students just being able to do work with the pegboard is something that they love and gravitate towards and are so excited just to know that they have the opportunity to use that material that's a big deal um, and the difficulty is isolated oh, this the difficulty and the control of error are very similar in that the students are just following the pattern of repeat addition until they find that common multiple so the control of error is built into the process where it's very simple just laying the pegs down in the appropriate place value. There really isn't a difficulty in that and they are just adding as they go. Essentially they're just counting. They're just counting the tens and the unit pegs to make sure that they have a group. So the control of error is then finding that um, common number between the two individual numbers that you're organizing or sorting through or patterning, however you want to describe it to your students. So just one, in this case for 32 and 24, it was ending at 96 as that least lowest common multiple. And obviously with other numbers, it would be coming to that same common multiple, whatever that, that common multiple is. And equally using the material correctly and making sure you are laying down the appropriate um, pegs for the appropriate place values and using the material as a whole correctly also is the control of error in that if you have three tens pegs for the number 24, common sense and self-correction, reviewing your proper use of the material would alert you that, oh, we built that number incorrectly, let me correct that, let me take out that one extra peg and then continue on my work correctly. So let me make sure I've answered all these questions. Please tell us what would come before and after, yes. When giving the lesson, the students need to have, yes. If the child does not know the facts needed, yes. What other materials teach the same concept? Yes, and the points of interest. Got it. All right, so I will roll up this mat and restore it. And I already thank Dog for coming to my lesson. And I sure hope I answered those questions and presented those lessons in the way that you're expecting to see them. And thank goodness to have these exams off of my back. Thank you, Mary.